All right, welcome back to another episode of Black Mass Paranormal. So in this video, we are going to talk about one of the most infamous cases of the paranormal in American history. And this case, oddly enough, isn't talked about all that much. And I really don't understand why. Because in September of 1961, Betty and Barney Hill were returning from their honeymoon in Niagara Falls. They were traveling down Route 3 in Lancaster, New, ha New Hampshire, when Betty had spotted what she thought was a falling star up in the sky. Now, Betty had spoken to her sister a couple days before this, and her sister had suggested that she had herself seen a UFO. So Betty mentioned this to Barney, and she said, you know, I think I just saw a falling star, but it was falling up. She described the star moving between the moon and what would be Jupiter in the sky. Barney kind of laughed and dismissed what she was saying and said, no, it's either a satellite or an airplane and just kind of dismissed what Betty was saying. As they were traveling further down Route 3, they were almost to a location called Indian Head where they noticed that this light had been following them. So they had the dog with them in the back and Betty suggested that they pull the car over so the dog could go to the bathroom and kind of take a break. So Barney pulls out his binoculars and he is looking up at the sky trying to determine what this thing is that seems to be following him in the sky. At first, Barney, it was just kind of fun and games. But then things started to get serious. What Barney described now looking at this UFO was not only a craft itself, but eight to 11 gray men inside. Barney claims that while looking at these individuals through the monoculars, they somehow communicated to him to basically stay where he was at. Barney said that he felt like the binoculars had gotten sunk down into his eyes and he pulls them away from his face and he runs around to the car and he hops into the car. Now, Betty and Barney both describe hearing some sort of like buzzing sound inside of the car. They also describe um, some vibrations and their bodies themselves start tingling. So the next thing that they know, they are about 35 miles away from where they had initially stopped the car. They have no recollection of this trip in between. And, you know, moving through uh, Route 3 in Lancaster, New Hampshire, you know, you're going through back roads. So it's going to be somewhat of a memorable, memorable trip. So the couple gets back home. Immediately, Barney does not want to discuss what is happening. This could be for a variety of reasons. And to me, this is where it really kind of validates this entire case. See, Barney Hill and Betty Hill were a bit of a different couple during the 1960s. They were an interracial couple. Barney being black and Betty being white. Now, Barney was huge in the civil rights uh, movement. He was also a social worker. So during that time, I would imagine it would be extremely difficult to come out and say that you had a close encounter with a UFO. But Betty was really struggling with what had happened. For five nights, Betty claimed that she had these vivid dreams of being 
in some sort of structure with another humanoid type creature. Now, when Barney initially saw the gray beings in the craft, prior to the ramps coming out of it, he described them as wearing like a glossy black uh, uniforms with like black hats. Betty was having these, these really vivid dreams for five nights. At this point, Betty wanted answers. Barney was kind of looking to just drop and dismiss what had happened. Betty finds the writings of a man named Ronald Key. Ronald Key had, starting in the 19, starting in 1954, he had been doing a lot of publishing on UFOs and military aircrafts. Betty, at that point, reaches out to uh, Ronald Key. Ronald Key then puts Betty and Barney in touch with William Webb. William, William Webb then decides he wants to interview Betty and Barney separately. During the interviews, both of their stories match up identically. However, he discovers a commonality between the two of them. There's actually a, t a two hour time gap in both of their stories where they cannot account for what was actually happening. Because of this, Webb puts them in touch with uh, Dr. Uh, Simon. Dr. Simon is a well-known hypnotherapist for treating World War II vets with PTSD. So Do Dr. Simon reaches out to Barney Hill and he sets up hypnotherapy sessions with Betty and Barney. During these hypnotherapy sessions, he's able to get a more detailed history of what occurred on that night of September 19th through September 20th, 1961. Dr. Simon claims that when Barney was describing his interaction with these beings upon this aircraft, that Barney like would, would refuse to open his eyes, that he was extremely tensed up and extremely emotional as these beings performed all of these tests on Barney. Now, Betty, during her recount, during the hypnotherapy session, <clears throat> was able to create a better understanding of that two hour time gap. During the hypnotherapy session, Betty claimed that the beings were telepathically talking to Barney and giving him directions as they were traveling down the road. They instructed Barney to pull off of the road and that's where they had their initial first encounter with these beings. Betty claims that at first she was pretty combative with the beings upon the aircraft. That when they tried to force her to do the testing, they were going to take uh, hair samples, skin samples. They apparently performed a pregnancy test through her navel and also used some sort of like stylus type object to uh, check out her spine. After their encounter and after their examinations, Betty described the inside of this craft. And inside this craft, there was a map on the wall that was a representation of the solar system. It essentially was a directional map to Earth from wherever these gray beings came from. And this is where the story takes an even stranger turn. As Betty is looking at this map, she is somehow communicating with these beings 
and these beings communicate to Betty that they are from the Zeta Reticuli star system. Now, it's a solar system that comes up in the works of a man named Bob Lazar. Now, Bob Lazar had no connection to Betty and Barney Hill. This Zeta Reticuli uh, star system, from my understanding, there is no way for Bob Lazar to know about the Zeta Reticuli uh, <clears throat> star system, which I'm going to go into in another video because it's extremely important. <clears throat> so after this encounter with the aliens, Betty goes home and she remembers that when she was having an encounter with what she called the examiner, that he had ripped or it had ripped the inseam of her dress as well as a couple other parts. The couple later then was convinced to publish a book in an attempt to make the public aware of the possibility of extraterrestrials living in our universe, essentially. So the Betty and Barney Hill story absolutely fascinates me. In these videos, I'm trying to keep them short and to the point. For Barney Hill, I personally feel like for his belief system in humanity, for him to take on something like being abducted by aliens during the civil rights movement while being in an interracial marriage was a courageous step. Like, I can't even imagine the ridicule that he would have gone through at this time. I mean, it's really amazing that this story actually ever surfaced. And maybe that's why a lot of people don't really talk about it. But I think it was amazing. And for Betty to become one of the leaders of the paranormal community talking about extraterrestrials is just absolutely fascinating. I don't really see, in a lot of these cases... In a lot of these stories, you're looking for something to make an obvious gain if they are going to try to fake this stuff. Whether it be financially or whether it be for fame. But because of Barney's participation in the civil rights movement, I would think that coming out with the story, regardless of how much money it made him, um, however much fame it brought him, I would think that the, I would think that the criticism that he had to have gotten during this time would have outweighed it. And I think that that would really have affected his overall message on what he was trying to achieve for our society. So, with all that being said, we are going to keep moving on with these videos. I hope you all enjoy them. Um, I'm trying to keep them short, somewhat short. Um, and I just want to say thank you all so much for all of the kind and amazing words. Uh, I've been having to deal with some uh, setbacks with the channel. But um, I think I've got everything figured out and I'll be moving forward. So I'm going to have a bunch of investigations coming up. Um, we've got these videos coming out as much as I can get them. Um, I'm going to do my best to, you know, post them um, at least, you know, Monday through Friday. I don't know. I might figure out a different schedule for it. Anyway, um, I'm going to get back to editing and working on my other stuff. So 
thanks for taking this 10 15 minutes with me and i hope you all enjoy hit that subscribe button uh definitely give the video a like uh check out the merch and let's keep rocking on let's make this channel huge so we can get out and we can do those big huge investigations and uh with that being said until next time